All right, folks, let's do a behind the scenes weather model discussion. It's Wednesday, man, February 1st. What is it with North Texas weather and February the 1st? I mean, we have winter storms every year right about this time, don't we? Last year we had one, it was a little bit later. It was more in the way of mid February. Uh, but <laughs> is, it, is it safe to say now that, I mean, the first part of February or the very end of January, mark that on your calendar. Do not make any plans because we typically have big problems weather wise here. Uh, it's another year of that, right? We're in the middle of an ice storm. So this is our behind the scenes weather model discussion. We do this for our social media, uh, again, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. This is separate from our normal live channel. I've been on the air doing our normal channel all day, but I, I wanted to jump on here. It's later. Um, it's like 635 right now. So we're doing this in the evening instead of the afternoon. But I do did want to do one of these um, just to kind of give you a behind the scenes look at what's going on. I'm still going to use a lot of our normal TV graphics and the only reason why you know we just have we really have this high impact weather moving through and I don't want anyone to be too confused by the raw data. I will show you some raw data coming up but I'm going to kind of walk you through kind of what we've been doing um, through the day because we're not done with this system yet. We have more tonight. We're going to have a little bit more in the morning and then we'll have a little bit more rain tomorrow and then we're going to refreeze it all Thursday night and Friday and then as we get into Friday, we're truly going to improve conditions, okay? But between now and then, we've got problems. We've got weather problems. And this is essentially an all-week deal. And, you know, the, the data on this changed so quickly over the weekend that my biggest concern through this has been people that just were not prepared. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many people that, you know, have families that you are just stocked up enough that if you couldn't leave the house for a week, are you good, right? I mean, are you set? You have the supplies you need. I mean, that's that's the only thing that's concerning uh, because the roads continue to be done, right? I mean, the roads are just not doable. Uh, the thing we've been tracking throughout the day is the opportunity of glazing and power outages. The good news so far, and I, I hate to even say it because so far, We've been doing okay here in North Texas. There are some sporadic power outages, but they've been few and far between, right? Now, I can tell you, if you have friends, family, and loved ones down in Austin, uh, it's a completely different story. They've also had some wintry precipitation down there, and they're having major power issues, right? I mean, they've, they've, I mean, the video coming in from earlier this morning, I mean, transformers were just blowing left and right, and they continue even this evening with major power outages down there. Not the power grid failed, but again, just limbs coming down. Uh, you have to remember, the, 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 just, just quickly on this, when you get the ice glazing, when you hear the term glazing, on a power line or on a limb once you get to that quarter to half an inch which is about where we are here in North Texas I mean we're basically there uh, it's where they are down in the Austin area you take the weight of the limb or you take the power line and you multiply it by 30 once you get to that point then that's why the limbs on the trees just snap right off that's why the power lines droop and you just run into power issues. It's not a power grid failure, but it's localized problems that develop. And then how do you fix it? The lineman has to go out there. Well, the lineman can't drive on the roads, so it's just a cascading effect. And I mean, typically the third part of an ice storm is the power issues. And we're basically at that third part. But luckily, 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 uh, we have not um, truly seen that impact yet here in North Texas. Again, sporadic outages, but uh, by and large, we've, we've been getting, we've been truly getting away. We've been kind of skating on, uh, so to speak. Um, let me go and show you temperatures. Quick shot, obviously, downtown Dallas there. And again, you can continue to see just kind of that hazy look. That's very light, frozen, uh, freezing rain that does continue to fall. Uh, in Dallas, we've mainly had freezing rain. There's been a few other locations that have had some sleet today, some frozen precipitation. But for most of us today, as anticipated, it's been freezing rain. Looking at temperatures around the area, uh, we're basically still at 30, right? We, we've been struggling to try and get to 31 as we went through the day. Uh, right now, we're basically, we're stalled at 30. And here's the important piece of this. Let me let me show you one other, uh, just one of our TV graphics. I know you guys want to see the raw data, but let me show you this. And this updates automatically. This is based off of the 15 increment um, high resolution rapid refresh model, right? And and it's still at 31. Earlier in the day, it looked like we were we were going to go 31, 32, 33 by early tomorrow morning. Well, it's basically now hovering 32 back down to 31 at 6 a.m. So it looks like the opportunity of freezing rain, it's going to continue to be there 
all the way through tomorrow morning and then we'll begin to taper this off and then we'll have one more opportunity of just some rain just a, just a cold rain um, later in the day uh, let me show you a couple other things here too um, I want to show you the ice storm warning one more time. Again, if you've lived in North Texas for very long, you know, these are rare. I mean, you know, look at this. You don't see these in North Texas very often. I mean, it's not unprecedented, obviously, uh, but I mean, it could be another couple of years before you see an ice storm warning. Uh, but again, currently all of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, the major counties under it, and again, all of our uh, counties out there to the west uh, being included in that ice storm warning, of course, that goes through uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, one quick peek at the additional glaze accumulations. The computer here again still I mean from right now this is an additional glaze not what we've already seen but the computer continues to highlight the 35 corridor off to the west and again it continues to show the opportunity of a quarter to maybe even a half an inch of glazing as we go through the evening and the overnight so so far again we've scraped by we've skated by we haven't had the power disruptions but we're not out of the woods yet only because of that right there only because of that the computer is still really estimating um, the, the potential at least for some significant glazing as we go through the overnight so here's the model I, I want to run you through this as well because there's been a little bit of a change as we've gone through the afternoon and now as we're heading into the evening so number one the opportunity of precipitation, it's there. Now that part hasn't changed. Now here's the, the devil in the details, right? And th this is really important. And I've kind of been watching around to kind of see really who, who's catching on to this today. Uh, but even though the, the computer model here is switching us, you can see we're going from the pink and the purple, right? The freezing rain back over to what the computer is then saying, just a cold rain. Okay, and so you may look at that and you may say, okay, this is progress, this is really good. But in this situation, the numbers we just looked at, we're basically right at 32. We're basically still at that freezing mark. And the thing you have to remember, a freezing rain, what you're seeing in the pink and the purple, it's still falling as liquid rain, right? So the, the way the computer analyzes this is it's saying, okay, well now the temperature is below freezing, so the rain droplets may find something frozen to stick to, right? But what do we have everywhere? We have ice everywhere. These raindrops don't have to look for anything to stick to, right? They're falling on the ice and refreezing, okay? So the reason why this is so important and it's a little misleading for tomorrow morning is the fact that we're gonna be right at 32. The ice on the ground is not necessarily gonna be melting and it, it's still just liquid raindrops, no different than the pink and it's still falling onto that ice and it's still refreezing. So this is misleading for tomorrow morning, okay? It's still gonna be a freezing rain type event. Um, hopefully the intensity comes down some, uh, but you'll see even as we go through the overnight, it's advertising a liquid rain, but it's no different because we're at 32 and again by 6 a.m. you saw it's advertising we're actually back down to 31. Okay so we have that all the way through about 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. We'll taper stuff off as the big upper level storm system comes through. We get the dry slot momentarily and then by 1 p.m. on the back side of it it's a cold rain. That should be an outright cold rain because temperatures will be above freezing. We should be melting some of the ice by that point point. and again as that comes through potentially even as a moderate rain. If it is a moderate rain, it will do wonders as far as melting um, the ice. If it's a very light precipitation, then it may not do much because it's probably still gonna try and freeze on contact. But big raindrops, warmer raindrops will actually help to melt the ice. So a lot still going on tomorrow. We're not out of the woods tomorrow morning. And even as we go through the day tomorrow, I would still anticipate the streets, uh, especially the bridges and the overpasses being pretty tough. And then the key piece of this, Thursday night, Friday morning, we're going to go back below freezing. We're going to refreeze everything. And then as we get into Friday, we'll jump the temperatures finally with plenty of sun. We'll begin to dry this up and we'll be on our way heading into the weekend. But again, for a lot of folks, I mean, this is, this is an all week deal. I mean, literally, this is an all week, you know, until Friday at noon deal that you've basically been stuck at home, you know, with the kiddos and hopefully everyone got enough supplies. You know, this, this change from a cold rain event over the weekend to this winter storm, and a lot of folks were caught off guard. And there's not a lot of folks, if you have kiddos, that are just stocked up, you know, for a week of being stuck in the house, right? So uh, again, hopefully this didn't catch too many people off guard. 
Um, this is what I want to do. I, I do. Let me show you. Let me show you radar, and then we'll look at the raw data, and we'll, we'll wrap this up. We won't do a super long one of these, and then we will get back to doing the all raw data, which I know for the people who really tune into this, that that's what you come here for. I get it, but like I said, th th there's so much going on, and this is so critical uh, that again, I really want to just use our normal graphics. So again, no one's confused as to uh, as to what's going on. Um, so there's there's radar. That's a live look around the area, and. Uh, um, again, it's, it's freezing rain. You can see the little pink color. The computer's kind of jumping that around, thinking there may be a little bit of sleet here or there. Could be, uh, but it's been primarily freezing rain. The darker areas of purple never look good because that's a moderate rain. In fact, let me do this. Let me see if I can just do this on the fly real quick here. I'm going to take the... Um, I may take the I may not be able to do it just on the fly I wanted to take the precipitation typing off uh, just to show you the actual rain intensity but I, I can't do it just on the fly and we won't mess with it um, but just know the darker purples that is a moderate rain a moderate freezing rain that's ongoing okay and you can see again in the Metroplex off to the west off to the north um, again that's going to be the trend through the evening even into the overnight so even though we've done okay power wise I mean, it may be too early to, to say for sure. And again, we hate for folks to have to wake up in the middle of the night and you look and you've got no power, right? But that could be, that could be the case, again, for, uh, for some folks out there uh, as we go through the overnight. Um, let me do this. Let me, let me actually pull up, um, let me just pull up the browser that I have here in the system. We'll look at the raw data. And uh, this is what I'm trying to get to. Um, and let me take a different zoom of this. And sorry if this is a little, a little discombobulated tonight. Like I said, we just we just got done um, with our normal shows on the air, and I just I jumped right on here to do one of these. This is what I want to look at quickly here. Uh, this is the latest run of the uh, the HRRR, right? The high resolution rapid refresh model. And can, I don't know how well you can see that. Let me actually try this one again. And that's worse. You can't see it. So you're just going to have to rely. You're just going to have to rely on what I'm saying. Maybe you can see that better. And this is just off of weathermodels.com. People always ask what site we use, weathermodels.com. It's just the one I prefer. Uh, th this one you do have to pay for, but there's another one called Pivotal Weather. Most of you probably already know about that, but the guys, they're actually, the town I'm from, Norman, Oklahoma, uh, they're actually up there, the guys that run Pivotal, and it's most of it's completely free. It's a really good site, by the way, too. Um, so what we're looking at are temperatures here. And we're looking for that magic 32 number. And the latest run here basically has around 630, going from that 31 we talked about earlier to 32. And then through the morning, we're basically at 32 until 9 a.m. At 9 a.m., we go to 33. And then 11 a.m., we go to 34. So mid-morning tomorrow, we're going to be enough above freezing that even if we still get a little bit of precip, we can at least start a melting process. And then you know, through the day, the way it looks right now, we should be getting up to 36. I have 38. We may struggle to 38, uh, but that would definitely help. You know, that will definitely help melt. And then again, we're going to refreeze Friday night, uh, uh, really Thursday night, early Friday morning, I should say. And then with plenty of sunshine on Friday, uh, that will really make a big difference. Um, okay, let me go and show you this as well. Just the uh, the overview. We like to We like to take a look at this. And quickly, this is the 500 millibar chart. So we know the storm that's coming through, we've been waiting on, right? You can see it coming through. Again, big area spin. Okay, so that one comes through. Do we have anything else on the horizon? And you can see by this upcoming Tuesday, we have a pretty weak storm that tries to come through. There will be a cold front with it. I've got about a 20% opportunity. In the region, there could be some showers. Doesn't look wintry right now. And then behind it, there's a larger storm that comes through. Uh, but again, the way it looks right now, uh, that one may be coming through dry. You can see we just kind of pinwheel additional storms behind that. Just a quick look here at the 850 millibar chart, just looking at air mass change, right? I know we're going through this pretty quickly, but uh, again, really what we wanted to focus on was the winter storm. But let me just kind of give you a look into the extended, into what we call the crystal ball here. And uh, again, what we're looking at just off the surface, we're looking for any true air mass change. Obviously, the colors to the north 
north, the blues, the pinks, that's Arctic air, and that's what we don't want coming down. That's what we have right now. Uh, that's what's giving us the problem, okay? Uh, so the real deal Arctic air retreats to the north. You can see a major trough developing in the northeast. And again, there's going to be some, you see the pinks going down into New England. Uh, I mean, some folks are calling this a once in a generation cold blast for them. Okay, so that stays off to our northeast. Luckily, we're not getting any of that whatsoever. Um, but again, that's going to be a major national weather maker um, for the folks up there. I mean, it's a big deal. Once in a generation cold blast, you know, that's a big deal, right? So as we go forward in time, uh, again, you can see we're milder. In fact, you can see the yellows building in, right? All the cold air staying well to the north. You can see that next weather maker that comes through with the cold front, it's a Pacific origin. You can see the smattering of blue coming in, right? So not, not a big air mass change. I mean, technically it's, it's a Pacific origin. You can follow it there, but even as it goes through the Intermountain West, it almost becomes a continental front, right? There's no real air mass change. We turn a little cooler, not a big deal. And then we're still watching to the north. Here comes another front and we get kind of a glancing blow towards about seven, eight, nine days on down the road of some chillier air, but the true Arctic air stays to the north. And that's where the Euro ends at the, uh, on day 10 there. But again, you can see behind it, that's a big ridge out to the west. See how temperatures go really mild all the way up for, through Montana, all the way up into parts of far southern Canada. That's a big ridge. And so again, that's going to continue to funnel the real cold air uh, down into parts of the Midwest and again, also the northeast. So there's not a lot of real big impactful weather uh, that's showing back up. So I know we were talking about the colors. Let me actually put some real numbers with that. Um, if, this, if this is your first time watching, that's not how we forecast the weather. It gives, us, it, it gives us a visualization of what's going on, right? So it gives us the concept of what's happening over the next 10 days. And then we take the actual numbers, uh, which are these, and then we compute our forecast, right? So again, you can see it's a big warming trend into Monday. By Monday, we're back to 67. In fact, by Sunday, we're back to 63. I mean, that's really looking good, right? And the next week, even though temperatures trend down some with the cooler air in the area, I mean, we're still in the 60s, we're still in the 50s. There's no real, there's no real air mass change, right? You can see there's no sharp uh, chill back down. So again, we'll take that. That's not bad. And again, that's in February, right? February, again, can be one of our more active months, one of our colder months as well. And even though we've got some high impact weather right now, we've got some better weather on down the road, okay? So that's where we are, folks. I know this was just a, kind of a mishmash one. We, we had to do this real quick and just kind of threw it all around. But again, thanks for watching this weather model discussion. We'll be doing these more consistently. And again, remember, uh, these are brought to you by our Patreon subscribers. And you know, the Patreon deal also helps to support our mobile app and other stuff that we're doing. It's just $2.99 per month, $2.99 per month. And again, if you do want to be a Patreon subscriber, patreon.com slash weather tracker TV. And again, we appreciate all of our Patreon subscribers as well. Otherwise, thanks for joining us this evening. We'll be back with you, of course, live on the channel in the morning. And uh, again, we'll continue to, uh, to track this winter weather event. Otherwise, have a great evening.